Hello, a very warm welcome to Fireside Chats. My name is Magda Pele, and today I have in the studio with me Sister Denise, who has been practicing Raj Yoga meditation for over 40 years. Today I'd like to go directly into the subject matter, because in a previous episode we looked at the subject of reincarnation, and today uh, we will be discussing reincarnation part two. We have found that there is so many questions that a lot of you have on the subject that it was worth exploring further. So Sister Denise, a warm welcome back to the studio. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, on the previous episode, we covered what reincarnation is, um, that a human soul takes on just a human body and no other body. We touched on the law of karma for a bit. What I would like to know from you today is once somebody really gets to grip with the fact that uh, whether you believe in reincarnation or not, uh, there comes with this understanding a responsibility towards yourself, is there not? Otherwise, what's the point of understanding it? You have to um, agree to it in order to consider that you have to take responsibility because if you deny reincarnation then you can say well why do I have to be responsible when there isn't anything like that so the thing is this that okay you consider there is reincarnation that means I have reincarnated uh, so what that means is you're looking at your life as consequences of karma done previously and everyone does good things and bad things so for all the bad things you've done you will get negative consequences for all the good things you've done you'll get good consequences so you look at yourself and you make a little chart and you see I got these good points and these bad points so I can say all these good things that's from my good karma all these bad things that's from my bad karma you know tot up the total and see overall what do I have you know and probably you would say hmm how much you know there, there's a song a religious song in India they say oh man look into the mirror of your heart and calculate how much sin is there how much charity is there so this is a sort of an injunction that is given to people to ask the person, really think about yourself in these terms. The body that you get is a consequence of karma. Uh, your health level is a consequence of karma. Your intelligence is a consequence of karma. What kind of family you uh, are born into. And then you have what's called as karmic accounts with different people. So if you get along really well with everybody and everyone's really nice to you, then it means that you have done very good karma in the area of interpersonal relationships, you see. So when you're looking at your current situation in terms of the good things and the bad things, it gives you an idea of the trend of your karma. Because there's reincarnation, there's karma, and there's sanskaras. We can't leave that one out. Um, sanskaras meaning personality traits. Well, sanskaras can mean that, but it means more, you see. What more? A sanskara is the um, trend, the tendency. You know, in uh, the Western world, we think of sin as an individual occurrence. Whereas when you're looking at it in terms of karma, reincarnation, and sanskaras, sin is the tendency to repeat that thing. Oh, um, in um, law, it is said, for example, that theft is a continuous offense. So is sin a continuous offense? In that sense, yes. Oh. You see, because you, you have set up a trend and there's a momentum, and then every time you get in a similar circumstance in which you thieved a previous time, you will be inspired to steal again. Okay, does that escalate? Well, yes. Ooh, no, no, not the, the account, the sin. If yes. you were a petty thief, you could go to armed robber. 
Yes. You Ouch. Know, <laughs> yes. Well, take a look at um, bribery and corruption. You know, when, when you first are offered a bribe, you think, oh, you know, I don't know, can you do that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and the second time, oh, yeah, mm, okay, no problem. Third time, it becomes normal, you see. And so definitely it's an escalation. You know, what happens, people think, you know, children have to be really moralized that because they're fundamentally likely to do sins. But the evidence is totally the opposite. They're much uh, cleaner than the adults who are, you know, playing out all of these trends that come not only from past karma, uh, sanskaras, but also what you've been doing in this life will set you in an escalation of your existing tendencies, you see. And this is why uh, we do meditation, because what happens with meditation is you are inserting into the momentum of repeating negative actions an energy which stops it. So that instead of carrying on in that direction, you go in a different direction. And so you bend the energy from going in the negative direction towards going more and more in a positive direction. And you get the strength to resist doing an escalation of the negative and the strength to begin to perform positive karma, which in turn causes the energy of the negative karma to wither. And so this is why we do what we do in Raj Yoga because it, it uh, actually causes this, um, this trend, this the momentum, yeah, or the, the trajectory, yeah, yeah, the trajectory comes to go to in a different way. Yeah, okay, okay. That's, um, that's incredibly deep understanding of the, the whole picture. And very okay. useful information. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now that you know that there is a responsibility on you, to um, modify your behavior in such a way that you only get positive return. Uh, how does one live? Because we live in a world where all that is uh, negative is thrown at you with a sugar-coated form. So that that which is negative is and um, uh, self-defeating okay, uh, is given such an attractive package that you, um, uh, we all fall for it, okay? Uh, uh, temptation is omnipresent. Um, and so here's an individual who is spiritually aware and having listened to your show, um, oh sorry, the show, uh, has, uh, you know, had received some flash of insight and decides, no, he wants to now walk the path of the straight and narrow. Um, where do you begin? Because it's a momentous uh, a responsibility, even if it's just taking care of yourself. The place where you begin is, you say, uh, the direction of my life is not going to my liking. I really need to do something about it. And that makes you think about it. And when you think about it, in terms of doing something about it, you're looking around to see, okay, well, what can I do about it? And one of the things that will come up is, well, what, I think I better meditate. And so a lot of people will look out for some kind of method of meditation in the thought that if I meditate, it'll improve the state of my life. And so that then brings you sooner or later to the Brahma Kumaris who teach meditation. And what do you get when you meditate is you get that energy, which interrupts the trajectory and bends it to a different direction. And it is a force because you see the force of sanskaras, the force of karma is pretty strong. Yes, yeah, so you need more ju than just an understanding to change it. You need power. You need power, yes. Okay, okay. so just the understanding that I shouldn't lie anymore doesn't do any good. Doesn't help you. It actually can make things worse. Usually does. Uh, gee, thanks for that. <laughs> so um, you have to, you need understanding and you need power to reform your life. 
You know this expression, people say, I would if I could, but I can't. So what does that mean? I don't have the power. Okay. And so this is why sometimes people, when they get to some sort of desperate situation, they will turn their attention to God and say, give me strength, which means give me power, because I would if I could, but I can't. That means people are admitting to themselves, clearly or not so clearly, that I am insufficiently powerful to run my life the way I want to. I have insufficient willpower. I need power. And of course, meditation means take power from God. And the force of God is a very, very positive force. Now there's the other thing that people talk about, which is the force of evil. And there's a very negative force. Now what is the force of evil? One way of putting it is it's the accumulated collection of all the thoughts, words, and actions of people that are negative, and that's pretty big. Mm. There's eight billion people on the earth all doing negative thoughts, words, and actions a lot of the time. And the force of God is um, that same amount in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. So you are under the thrall of this momentum which forces you to go this way and your personal power is woefully insufficient to make any difference doesn't matter how much people moralize at you punish you put you in jail or any of those things it's not enough mm -hmm. the only way that you can actually change the direction of your life is by taking power from god and then when you take power from god what you also get is information and the information that God will give is, don't worry, you're a soul. So be aware that you're a soul and take power from me because then you can become once again what you were, which is fully empowered, pure, peaceful, powerful, loveful, blissful soul with the attention on powerful soul. And a powerful soul can do what they want. Okay. So that the people who are doing bad things, in my opinion, it's not that they're bad souls, they're weak souls. So what you have to do is fill that soul with power and um, good information. And then that soul is enabled to change the direction of their life. So they need uh, information and power. Is it Denise? Um, there are many who are listening to you right now who have suffered um, horrendously in their past. Um, people have been subjected to sexual violence, to physical violence, to emotional abuse, to um, not having parents or having abusive parents. So the list is endless. Uh, and then they um, acquire an understanding of reincarnation and the law of karma. Uh, so um, they feel inspired to you know, make some effort to ensure that the um, suffering comes to an end, because that is one of the reasons for embracing spirituality, to end your pain. Together with that, uh, there comes this feeling of intense shock and disheartenment to lose heart, that what the hell did I do in the past to deserve that? How do you deal with that burden? because you have to take responsibility and understand I created the account and that can be more painful than the debt itself. That's how, right. How do you deal with that? Well, people do come up with this statement uh, whenever things go really badly and it's um, unconscious. They say, what did I do to deserve this? And if you look at that statement, there's an assumption that I did something to deserve this. But what happens is because in their culture there isn't anything like karma and reincarnation and sanskaras or any of that, it's spoken as a rhetorical question. Now once you realize, oh my goodness, I did do something to deserve this. And it's not very difficult to figure out what. 
because whatever your experience of punishment is or your bad experience is, it has to be absolutely related to what you did. So that's why this is happening to you. And this is why people really, really don't like the idea of the laws of karma. Okay, Sister Denise, how do you deal with that pain and shock of knowing you created that, you did this to yourself? The pain of that is intense. I think that people actually don't take it on board of hook, line and sinker. You know, they, they um, hear about it and they say, nah. nah. At some point you've got to say, yeah, it But was I think me. You, you take a little bit of time to get used to it. Okay, so you open the tap a bit and let the water out, then close it again. Something because, like that. Because opening the tap fully can it's, drown you. Yeah, absolutely. It's unbearable. Okay. And then one of the things that um, you, you have to think about is how you are going to process that idea because you have to take into consideration a lot of other things in addition to the concept of the laws of karma, reincarnation, sanskaras, and so on. So there is another angle that I think is very worthwhile bringing it in. And that is the angle that this is a test. What is a test? The, uh, the problem. The, the pain and sorrow that you're facing at the moment. Yes. This is a test. This is a test. A test of what? Well, I'll tell yeah. you just a second. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sitting on the edge of my seat. <laughs> All right. Well, if you say this is a punishment, it's because you feel it's punishment. But then there are some people who say, you know, this is pretty hard, but, you know, looking at myself, I just don't think that I um, did something for which this is the karmic return. It seems to be something else. And that's where you'll say, you know what, this is a test. Can I get through this? Or what, what am I being tested on? You know, what's, what's this all about? And that then becomes something you have to really think about. You know, this is here to make me experienced, to make me strong, to make me able to do something that is outside of my range unless I get through this thing. You see? So that's a test. So, Sister Denise, having understood the laws on principles of reincarnation and understanding the law of karma and understanding then that you have to take responsibility not just for your life but for the full journey of the soul onto earth. How do you live um, uh, this current life uh, whilst carrying the burden of that knowledge? Um, and how do you um, uh, manage your karma unfolding in such a way that um, that you don't feel overwhelmed by your knowledge? I think that there are safety mechanisms in place. A person may hear about it, but they won't take it in or take it on board in such a way that it's an unbearable burden, that um, it doesn't happen or very rarely happens. Uh, a person who is able to carry the burden of that knowledge is strong enough to carry it. And uh, they won't really think of it as a burden. They'll think of it as a stimulation. So it's, it's fine. Uh, there's one thing that I think is quite worthwhile knowing. If you uh, are experiencing something really bad, uh, and it's a karmic punishment, what you'll also have is the sanskar to again and again do that thing. If it's a test, you won't have that. Mm. And that's really how you can discern the two. Okay. Now, um, working with the knowledge of reincarnation means um, that you want to ensure that your next birth is as good as possible on every level that matters to you. Uh, financially, um, relationship-wise, I think relationships is the most important. Um, um, intellectually, uh, health-wise, um, spiritually. Uh, what do I do 
to ensure that my next birth is, um, offers me everything that a human being could want uh, while still having to settle <laughs> the debts that um, um, I have to pay off in this birth. In other words, um, if it's a, a bank account, okay, I don't uh, have to pay off a, well, a huge big fat mortgage bond, a <laughs> mortgage on the soul, uh, but um, how do I, uh, what investment do I make to ensure that um, uh, there's a maximum return? Well, I think you probably do have a big mortgage bond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so there you are, you are at a certain point in your existence, your long cycle of reincarnations and what you have at this point where you start learning about all this is you are on the cusp between settling the past debts and creating the future um, you know the investment mm, the and cusp, this is uh, the cusp of the soul yes oh, I like that yeah and and the cusp of one cycle to another cycle so this is why it's also known as the time of reckoning and so you have to settle your old accounts and create new accounts and th so this is why the study and practice of Raj Yoga I exists so that we are fully informed about everything we need to know to deal with the reality of I have this account to pay so I need some income how do you create income? By meditating. Every time you meditate, you're taking in more light, that's more cash in your spiritual bank account. And you have these bills that come up to pay. So if you're making lots of cash, then when they come, you say, okay, pay out the cash. But you're also investing. So it means you also want to do some pure karma. Uh, you want to do the very best investment and so you use your time, your talents, your thought, your words, your deeds. Everything you do is calculated to be a positive investment and produce a positive uh, return on your investment. And you're also accumulating enough to handle your accounts as they come up. And if you do this really well, that's called success in terms of your spiritual life. Wow, <laughs> that's quite a um, lot of information. Ms. Denise, um, in every subject that we take up, we look at uh, the role of God in all of this. How do you bring the understanding and relationship that we have with God into our understanding and working with the uh, laws surrounding reincarnation? When God fits into the picture, I'd like to know how. Well, it's a little bit like the tax man. <laughs> says, okay. God is Uncle Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly Uncle Sam, but, you know, um, the one who says, okay, um, uh, let's look at what we've got here. God is the ultimate receiver. <laughs> well, maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, but of a receiver of spiritual revenue. Yeah, okay. yeah. In, um, in that sense, never, that never, never thought of God in that cons in, in that light before. But go on. Mm. So um, you have a debt. You don't know how heavy it is. God knows. So God will let you know. Okay, you've got a debt. Um, it's coming up for payment. You better make sure that you put, you you start earning because you're going to need some cash here. Mm. And so you. Be in my remembrance, and every time you connect with me, you're drawing the energy that you need to pay your accounts. And while you're doing that, take enough that you're accumulating for your future. This is really where God comes in, is saying, okay, this is the situation, I'm your resource, make full use of me while I'm available. Hmm make full use of me while I'm available. Okay, that is a very powerful note on which to bring uh, today's talk to an end. Um, any last thoughts for our viewers on what has been a fascinating look in this two-part series on reincarnation? I think it's very important to know that you will never have to face anything that's too much for you to manage. Mm. 
look into yourself, find your power, and it is there, and you will be able to manage it. So never get overwhelmed. You, you just know that you will not ever have to deal with anything that's too much for you. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that is a powerful note on which to end. Thank you, Sister Denise. So, Sister Denise has shared a very merciful view of uh, the laws and understanding surrounding reincarnation. She also shared what this understanding, what this understanding does uh, for you as an individual, how it can liberate you, and how you can use this knowledge to your advantage by taking power from God to settle all your debts so that your next birth is one that you would want it to be on all levels. So thank you so much for joining us today and I hope you um, spent a half hour that was um, worthy of some thought uh, as to how to take the subject further. Thank you so much for joining us and goodbye.